So great to be with you in your homes this evening and we trust that God's going to meet with each and every one of us individually um, even as we are scattered throughout the city because we are united um, by the Spirit of Christ and tonight's obviously going to look a little bit different with us coming to you in video form and you, you'll see five different people introduce five different prayer topics and after they've introduced it a screen will come up with the prayer points on it so that you can pray along with us in your homes. 
Um, we trust that this will be a rich time for us as a community and um, even if you have children, we do encourage you just to bring your kids around you during this time. Um, we often see Jesus gathering kids to him and blessing them and um, trust that your, your family and your children will be blessed through seeing their parents pray. And um, if you're alone this evening, um, we just want to encourage you that actually God is with you. God the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit is partnering with you as you pray together and um, helping us to pray in line with his will. And just in line with um, what we've been going through as a church, as Nick's been speaking through two chronicles, where it says that if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, and cry out to me, I will hear their prayers and heal their land. And we trust that God will do that this evening with us as a community, that he will hear the cries of his people, and that he will put his hand over us as a nation and as a community. And um, just in line with this weekend, we've got the Easter weekend coming up, and it's a significant weekend for us as a church. And um, we trust that many people will be able to actually meet Jesus this weekend. And just in line with that, we've got a scripture that we've been carrying that we'd like to read, and um, for us to pray into that scripture together as a community. It's from Hebrews 12, from verse 1. Mm -hmm. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders mm -hmm. and the sin that so easily entangles, and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, mm -hmm. the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross. And the first point out of the scripture that we want to pray into is just that as individuals and as the church, we would fix our eyes on Jesus during this time. We would center on him, focus on him, and that he would become our, our everything, our main thing, mm -hmm. and our one thing. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so that would be the first thing we're going to pray into, is just that we would focus on Christ. And then the second thing is that even as we focus on the gospel this weekend, with Jesus' death and his resurrection, that people would actually find the freedom of the gospel to be able to throw off the sin that so easily entangles us, to get rid of some of those things that have been hindering us in what God's calling us to individually and as a community. And um, then the third point we just thought we could pray into is that there's a race marked out for us, um, individually and corporately, and we want to be able to run that race um, in the best way that God can allow us to. And this weekend is an incredible time for us to realign with Him, um, to fix our eyes on the foundational truths of the, of the cross and of the gospel, and for us to um, actually find freedom to run our race that God's called us to. So we're going to pray, and we're just going to need the time. And then once Abs and I finish praying, um, you'll see a screen come up that will then have the points on that you as a, in your homes and as a family or singles can, can begin praying into until the next person comes up. So Lord, tonight, as we are scattered in our homes, mm -hmm. we want to fix our eyes on you, Jesus. So. We, we fix our eyes on, on what you have done yeah. on the cross during this Easter weekend, the fact that you died for our justification and that you were raised to life again, mm -hmm. and that we are new creations in you. We fix our eyes on you, Jesus. So. Also, and the perfecter of our faith, our Lord. Yes, Lord, and we do ask that this weekend you would capture your church's gaze, Lord, that um, our hearts and our, our minds would be um, consumed by who you are, Jesus, and that you would bring people back to yourself, you would bring those who are far off near, Lord, and that you would be glorified, Lord, through the work that you've done. We pray that um, your death and your resurrection would bring life to people in our communities and in the globe around us, Lord.
Good evening, Great Point. So good to be with you. Thank you, for, thank you, Chris, for leading us to pray for Easter. J.C. Ryle says, Trials are intended to make us think, to wean us from the world, to send us to the Bible, to drive us to our knees. This evening, um, can I ask us to earnestly pray for those that are lost? Stats in the U.S. show that there are many turning their eyes to Jesus amid this pandemic. Many that are buying Bibles, many that are searching for scriptures and searching for hope in Jesus. In light of Nick's message on Sunday, can we pray for those that are, drift, that are drifting and that are backsliding, that are lost and that are bound by religion? Acts 3.19 says, Repent therefore and turn back that your sins may be blotted out that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord, and that he may send Christ appointed for you. Can we cry out, maybe we can name somebody that we know, picture somebody in our mind as we would cry out to God that they would be saved. Maybe we can pray for those like, those that are in, uh, in a point like the prodigal son, found himself in the pigsty and came to his senses and says, it is better to be in my father's house. And he went to his father and the father embraced him. Can we pray for those that are in the valley of despair right now, that don't have any hope, that they would find their hope in Jesus, that their darkness would be turned to light and their fear to faith and their mourning into joy. Can we pray? Can we stand in faith, Red Point? And can we shout out that God would make a way for those that need you, Jesus. We ask you, Lord, in Jesus' name, we come before you, Father. We know that you are a great God. You're the God of yesterday, today, and forever, Lord. You know the beginning and the end. We ask in the name of Jesus that you would save those that are lost, that are bound by religion, that are bound by idols. We ask, Lord, that you would save them, that you would come to them in their dreams and give them visions of you, in Jesus' name. Those that are lost in fear, that don't have any hope, we ask, Lord, that you would save them in Jesus' name. You are the only one who would save, Lord. We can't do anything but preach your word and declare that you are King of kings and Lord of lords. But you do the saving. You're the one that does the work. We ask, Lord, for those that are backsliding and that are, Lord, drifting away. We ask in Jesus' name that you would call them back like the prodigal son that they would come to their senses and say it is better to be found in the house of the Lord, better to be found in the kingdom of God than in the kingdom of this world. We cry out to you, Lord, for people we know by name, family members, Lord, colleagues, we ask, Lord, friends that are lost, we cry out to you that you would save them. In the name of Jesus, we know, Lord, that you are a miracle-working God. You are a God who would do the work. We cry out to you, Lord, that you would save our nation as well. Save our nation in Jesus' name. There are so many stuck in ancestral worship as well. We cry out that you would save them in the name of Jesus, that you would reveal yourself to them. We thank you, Lord, for this evening in Jesus' name.
Hi guys, following on from MOVE, I'm going to, we're going to be praying into COVID-19 globally. There's not a nation in the world that hasn't been affected by COVID-19. The scripture I have for tonight for us to pray into is Matthew 9 from verse 35 to 38. So Jesus had been traveling around from in towns and villages, preaching the good news, gospel of the kingdom, and healing all sorts of sicknesses and diseases. But he looked at the people and this is what he said. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless. Other translations say confused, dispirited, distressed. And that's what I see when I look at the TV coverage at the moment of what's happening in, the pandemic, in this pandemic. People are confused and harassed and helpless and frightened. Um, as of Wednesday, the global total of, of reported cases is over one and a half million with about 83, 84,000 deaths. And I wonder of those deaths, how many of those people know Jesus, particularly in countries like Iran, even in Italy, which is a Roman Catholic country, how many knew Jesus of those that died? Jesus was able to heal every disease and sickness. And I believe that he is able to wipe this COVID-19, um, this, this pandemic out with one command. But I believe that he's busy with something more. He's dealing with a pandemic that is way more lethal, and that is the disease of, of, of sin, of rebellion against God. And that disease results not only in physical death, but in spiritual death and separation from God. And so Jesus taught his followers to pray like this. He said, the harvest is plentiful, it's huge and ripe, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. And so my prayer points tonight, tonight, firstly, are to thank God that he has the world's attention this Easter. Secondly, to pray for the church that we would see and seize every opportunity to share the, the gospel of hope that we have. And then thirdly, Revelations 5 verse 9 says that in heaven one day there are going to be persons from every tribe and language and people and nation that are worshipping God. And my prayer is that we can be part of that in our generation of many hundreds of people coming to faith in Jesus during this time of pandemic. So let's pray together. Father, I want to thank you that you're alive and that you're on your throne. I thank you that you love the nations of the world. And our prayer today is that during this pandemic time that your church would arise and we pray too that there would be many many hundreds and thousands of people that would come to faith in jesus as a result of this time we love you lord
Good evening, Redpoint. So following on from Ingrid, still with COVID-19, we're going to spend some time in prayer for families, healing, and just for God's protection over his people in this time of uncertainty. So we're going to look at Romans 4 from verse 17, where Paul speaks to the Romans on faith and the father of faith, Abraham. I have made you the father of many nations in the presence of God in whom he believe, who gives life to the dead and calls into existence the things that do not exist. In hope he believed against hope, that he should become the father of many nations. As he had been told, so shall your offspring be. He did not weaken in faith when he considered his own body, which was as good as dead since he was about a hundred years old. Or when he considered the barrenness of Sarah's womb, no unbelief made him waver concerning the promise of God, but he grew strong in faith as he gave glory to God, fully convinced that, he, that God was able to do what he had promised. So Red Point, let's join our hearts tonight as we pray for families, for healing and God's protection. Dear Father God, we come to you through your son, Jesus Christ. We thank you, Lord, for families. We thank you, God, that you placed us in families. We thank you that you know each one of us individually, intimately, and you know the, uh, the issues that we face as families. And tonight we just cry out to you, Lord, for healing, for those in our families from the virus and from other ailments, Lord. And we thank you, God, that you are the same God yesterday, today and forevermore, Lord, as you brought to pass the promises to Abraham and to Sarah, Lord. We just ask you tonight for healing, O God. We thank you for your word that says that by your stripes we are healed, Lord. And we just pray, Lord, for those inflicted with the virus right now, that you will bring your healing upon them, Lord. And Father, we pray for faith to increase in, as we trust you for healing, as we saw Abraham had immense faith in you, O oh God. And Father God, we also think of those who have, uh, uh, think of the families who have lost uh, loved ones to the virus, God. We just pray for uh, your peace, for your comfort, for your strength upon them right now. We pray for protection upon them, Lord, and for all of our families, Lord. We pray, Lord, that you will keep them safe at this time, O oh God. And Father, not only for physically healing, Lord, we also pray for healing of our hearts, Lord, for spiritual healing right now. Father, for this time of, of testing brings out, Lord, things in our hearts that are not of you, O oh God. Cure us of these things. Cure of our, us of sin, O oh God. Create in us a clean um, heart, Lord, and a pure heart before you tonight, Lord. We also pray, God, that we will have hope to believe, Lord, that you will bring to pass what you have promised, O oh God, even as Abraham against all hope he hoped in you god and father god we also think of people lord in families who have broken relationships we pray at this time that your spirit of reconciliation will visit them even as we think of the time of easter lord where you came to earth lord to reconcile us to father god pray lord that you will bring healing you will bring restoration you will bring unity and you will bring forgiveness lord in the hearts of these families right now oh god we pray, Lord, for your protection over all the red pointers, over families and friends, O oh God, and that your will may be accomplished in their lives right now, and that we will look up to you. We will look to the God of hope. We will look to the God of faith, Lord, and we just trust, trust in you tonight.
Hey Redpoint, this is quite exciting to be praying as our families in our homes. So let's do our best. In this prayer slot, we'll be praying for the business leaders and for the economy, as for, well as for our fellow South African people who are being seriously impacted by it. So we have two points to pray into. John Maxwell, who is a leadership guru, states that before God leads the world, he first wants to lead his leaders. So uh, my first point is for us to pray for our business leaders, that they would seek God's counsel, that they would ask for his wisdom, that they would find new ways of doing things. So, because I don't think that the old ways are going to work anymore. You can't put new wine into an old wineskin. So we need a new wineskin in the marketplace. Our second point is for all the South Africans who are being seriously impacted by the lockdown. We are all going through tough times right now and will be for the next few months. This is beyond our control. We need to remember one thing. Nothing that happens should distract us from continuing to respond faithfully and trusting God. In difficult times, we need to hold on to the constancy of who God is. His nature and character don't change because times are hard. Jeremiah 17 verse 5 to 8 says, This is what the Lord says, Cursed is the one who trusts in man, who draws strength from mere flesh, and whose heart turns away from the Lord. That person will be like a bush in the wastelands. They will not see prosperity when it comes. They will dwell in the parched places of the desert, in a salt land where no one lives. But blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord, whose confidence is in Him. They will be like a tree planted by the water that sends out its roots by the stream. It does not fear when He comes. Its leaves are always green. It has no worries in the inner year of drought and never fails to bear fruit. So at this time, we really need to be trusting God and having our confidence in Him. Otherwise, we are like a person in verse 5. I really believe that the Lord is compelling us to look to Him and to trust in Him at this time. Can we pray that God would help us to look to Him as the source of our provision? That He would help us to look out for each other and help us get through this tough economic time as a nation. So I will start the prayer and then you guys can just continue in your homes. Okay, let's pray. So Lord, we just want to thank you for our business leaders. I want to pray, Lord, that they would look to you for wisdom at this time. I want to pray, Lord, that you would help us business leaders to lead us through this tough economic times, Lord, that we would do it together. We would do it with, with a government, Lord, with a local government and national government. But I want to pray for wisdom in, in leading us, Lord, and help the leaders of this nation to lead us through this tough time, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We ask that in Jesus' name. Amen.
So even as we close up this prayer time, just really want to thank you guys for praying with us as a community and um, trust that this has been a rich time for you. And if you felt something prophetically through this prayer time, really do encourage you to send it through to the elders. And we love to hear um, actually God speaking through his church and what he's saying to his people. Yes, thank you so much for praying, everyone. And just trusting that this Easter weekend would be a beautiful time for you where God reveals his gospel anew and afresh and trust that he would meet with you during this weekend. We love you guys love. and continue praying for you. <laughs> Don't stop yet. <laughs> Good evening, Red Point. Um, it really is a joy to be able to be with you this evening as my wife gathers herself. Sorry, Spirit. Um, Sorry, Blue. Start it again. Yeah. How was your week? Good evening, Red Point. 